What is up fellow game developers, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to Muddy Wolf Studios. In this video we're going to be creating this very simple um, double jump feature. As you can see here, it's just double jump, you jump, you can double jump, you can't jump any more than twice. But you can choose how many extra jumps you get, so we can set this up to two. So you can see we get triple jump, um, we can set up to like five, we can create loads of jumps. And he's off the screen, and there we go, he's back down. So yeah, you can choose how many extra jumps you want. It's a pretty cool script, super easy to do, and I am going to show you how to do that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the current script. I'm just going to delete it. Goodbye. Boom. Got the whole movement script. We're going to recreate the whole movement script. I'm literally just going to delete this player movement script over here. Um, it's going. It's going. And it's gone. But before we do that, I want to show you two key points of this um, character. So my world is set up so you can see I have a platform and a ground. The ground has a layer of ground and also has a box collider 2D. Um, a platform with the layer of ground. So anything you want to be a grounded, so anything you want to be able to jump on, um, needs to have the layer of ground. And then um, a box collider. We also have this element on our player called feet. And this is the point where we're going to check if our player is touching the ground. We then have our, we then have on our actual player, we have a box collider 2D, obviously a sprite renderer and a transformer given. Um, a box collider 2D, which um, is just a standard box and a rigid body 2D, which is actually set to gravity scale of five. The reason for this is because the gravity scale of five uh, makes it fall faster and I prefer the jumping in that when you can fall faster because it's more realistic in my eyes or more fun to play with. Uh, we also have a freeze rotation on the C axis. We don't want him spinning around. So that is everything you need to know about what's set up in this scene. I am then gonna add a new uh, script called movement script. I'm gonna create an add and we're gonna open that up. So once that loads, you'll do a little loady load. You gonna do a little loady load? Hello, loady load. Here it goes. It's doing a loady load. And there's a loady load. I'm gonna open this up, and there we go. Ooh. Load it. You load it. You good? There we go. Cool. So we're just gonna remove the starting stuff. We don't need it. We don't need system stuff. We just need Unity, and we need a couple of references. So first thing first, we need a pub. Oh. A public flow of speed. I'm going to set this to 10F for now. That's going to be the speed we move on the X axis. So left and right. Um, we then need a public flow called jump force. Jump power. Probably jump power makes more sense. Uh, we'll set that equal to 15F. So it gives us slight height when we jump. Um, and then we need an integer. This integer is going to be how many extra jumps we want other than the original. So we say extra jumps equal to one. We just want one simple extra jump. We then need a private variable called um, just jump count because we need to keep keep track of how many jumps our player has actually made. Obviously set to zero to start with. I'm going to move this down because we don't need that there. And then going to have a public layer mask which is going to be called uh, ground uh, ground layer. <laughs> ground layer um, and we'll set this in the inspector we also need a reference to our rigid body 2d and we'll do that in the inspector too i'm actually going to set this to serialize uh, serialize field and not public because it doesn't need to be a public field uh, and same with the layer mask which is ground layer um, oh and finally we need a last uh, field called uh, we need a transform, which is going to be our feet, so where our player's uh, feet is, where we should be touching the ground. Um, we need a couple more privates. So after jump count, we need a boolean, which is, is grounded. Obviously, this will be set to false, or actually, it doesn't need to be set to anything. We'll set it in the, uh, in the script. Um, obviously, this will just check if we're grounded. We also need a float called MX, which is going to be our... Um, input for our X uh, horizontal movement and we finally need enough one called jump cool down and this is for smoother jumping so I think all platformers should have this but you know when you accidentally run off the edge and you're just off the edge or your corner off your player is just touching the edge but you go to jump and it doesn't jump this will fix that issue um, 
you basically give the player the benefit of the doubt. They because you guys can't follow how fast the computer moves, you know. That sort of thing. That's what we're doing here. We now need a Foid update. Um, and in the update, we just want to set MX. So we're going to do the horizontal movement. We're going to say MX is equal to input.getAxis horizontal. Um, and then we need an if statement say, um, well, actually, we don't need to do this yet. We'll just do the um, horizontal movement for now. So we're going to say fix update. And we're going to say rp.velocity is equal to a new vector 2. And we're just going to say in here mx times speed, which is going to be our um, x velocity. And then we're just going to say rb.velocity.y, which will just basically say use what our current velocity is on our y. Um, and that's basically going to set our velocity. Um, on the x-axis. So if we save this, this should be working. Uh, let's go back to the inspector and let's assign our um, assign our variable. So first things first, let's assign the, well, we could drag the player into our rigid body. We can drag the feet in and we can set the grounded layer to ground. Now if we just save and hit play, you'll see we can move left and right. We can't jump though. We need to set up the jumping. So let's close this. And also I noticed my ground layer didn't actually set there, so I'm gonna reset that. Save, and let's go back to the script. So next part is we need to be able to jump. So we're just gonna say if um, input dot uh, get button down, or get button down um, jump, we're just gonna say jump. We're gonna call it a, oh, not jump, call down, jump. Uh, which we'll create down here. So we'll just create a void jump. And in here, we're just going to say rb.velocity is equal to a new vector 2. Um, the reason I'm using velocity instead of like, um, uh, what's it called? Add force is because add force, when you go to jump a second time, for especially for double jumping features, when you go to jump a second time, you only get like a little bit of extra force, which isn't great because then it looks like you're not, you haven't actually done a double jump. And that's the reason why. So the X will be um, obviously rb.velocity.x because we want to keep whatever our X is, but the Y will be our jump force or jump power, should I say. And that is that to actually jump. So we can actually now test jumping, just standard jumping. So let's hit play. So now if we jump, you can see we can jump. But the problem is we can now just jump forever. We can just keep going. There we go. We're gone. We're gone. We're out here. Um, which isn't what we want, of course. We actually want to, I'm going to zoom in just a little here. Um, we want to actually check if we're grounded. So that is the next one. We're going to say void check ground or grounded. Um, and in here, we're actually going to use a the physics 2D off. We're going to say if physics 2D dot overlap circle so what this does it checks um it creates like a, a ray cast of a circle around and it checks if we're touching any other colliders if we are this returns true um if not then it returns false so the point will be feet dot position because obviously we don't want it at our player's feet we want it at our um our feet um the radius i'm going to do 0 0.5 f uh, you can play around with that how you want which one you feel works best but there's just the radius of how far the circle emits from the position we then want the third area called layer mask and obviously our layer mask can be our ground layer um and this basically just says we're only checking we don't want to check if we're touching anything else but the ground layer so we only want to see if we're touching the ground layer um which then we're going to say is grounded is equal to true we're then going to say jump count because we want to set our jump count. We want to say it's equal to zero. If we're touching the ground, then we reset. But and jump cooldown, we're going to set it's equal to time. Oh, Jesus. Time dot time plus 0.2f. You can set this as a variable. I find 0.2f is just enough time to save a person if they're falling. It's like a quick reaction. So you've only just left sort of thing. It's like you don't want to give them too much. If you add this too high, then they might be able to jump forever. If you go, I mean, like they'll be able to jump away from your player. We don't want an else if. So 
this is the second parameter. So if we're not actually touching the ground anymore, so if we're not our, our circle isn't touching anything, we're get, we're going to basically use this jump cooldown to say, okay, we're giving them the benefit of the doubt. They've got 0.2 seconds to correct themselves and hit the jump key if they want to. So we're going to say time dot time is less than jump cooldown. Then we can then jump again. So we're just going to say it's grounded. It's equal to true. We don't, however, want to set jump count in here because that's uh, we don't want to set jump count in here because we just it means we're going to be adding extra jump time because uh, this is just off in the air. Um, so now we want to say else is grounded is equal to false, and that is all we need to do for this ground check. We want to call this inside our update function. I'm going to call it after my uh, jump key. The reason being is because if we set it before, sometimes this 0 0.2 is like more like a 0 0.5, and then they can jump a bit, they can jump extra, and it, you don't want to give them that. We want to do it after. Um, but that's cool. So now we want to say for each jump. Oh, wait, so we've already set the jump up. We want to go into our jump and say if it's grounded or or jump count. Uh, so we want to say if grounded or if jump count is less than extra jumps, that's it, yeah. So we want to say we can jump if we're grounded or if we've still got some jumps left. So in here we just want to say jump count plus plus, we just want to add one. And then that's it. That's what we need to do in here. And that should be it for our double jumping script. I think that is everything we needed. Um, as I said, it was a quite simple one. So let's hit play. So now if we jump, double jump, as you can see, I'm spamming the jump, but I can only jump twice. So now we should have enough height to jump up here. Oh, well, if we don't get stuck. There you go, jump up there, and then you can double jump from there, but we can't jump any higher. Also, if I run off this edge, you can see I still get that extra jump, um, that extra double jump. The reason being is because we give a slight die of time, but if I go too far, then I only get my one double jump, because obviously we've just ran off the edge. If I run off the edge and we're not grounded, we only get the one extra jump. Um, so that is a simple double jump script. I hope this has gave you something to be able to use in your game. If it has, then let me know in the comments. Tell me what game you're working on. I'm interested. Um, and obviously, if you like the video, then hit that like button below. Um, and if obviously uh, you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button. The more people who subscribe, the more videos I want to produce. The more videos I want to produce, the more people I can teach. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And